Yesterday, when I was reading the Irish Catholic, the headline that really caught my attention was um, this one here. Pause Irish Sinish. I was saying, pause Irish Sinish. And so I was reading through it, and then it says, continued on page four. But on page four, there doesn't seem to be much more on what is written here. The Church of Ireland should pause its National Synod until conclusion of global process. The General Sec Secretary of the Vatican Synod has suggested. Cardinal Mario Grech recommended that Ireland proceed at a slower pace. And so I was there very intrigued by uh, that headline. People will remember after the Irish census document was published, I was the first Catholic blogger to do uh, my opinion on it. And people saw, thought, Robert, you're very harsh. You're very harsh. Uh, they're trying their best and so forth. But I just called it out for what it was, the destruction of the Catholic faith. I called it demonic. I, I honestly will say it as it is. Because when you were not bringing people to Christ to encounter him, where are you leading them? Where are you leading them? And over the past few weeks, um, I've been reading a book called this, The Ascent of Man to God. Uh, answering the Vatican II period, the doctrine of acquiring Christian perfection and the universal call to holiness. Because as a blogger, as a Catholic blogger, we are it's important that we engage engage with Vatican II in a different way than most people have been engaging. Because I think in, in the traditional community, in a lot of tradition, people that go to traditional Latin Mass, they hear Vatican II and we completely want to exclude it. And that's not how the church works. That's not how church history works. We have to understand what Vatican II said and asked um, and not be very very quick to say okay it happened and after vatican ii things went haywire people need to remember vatican ii is one thing and the implementation is another another thing and this synodal process if you read through the document it is so far removed from vatican ii that you would wonder what is happening in the church you would would um, especially those that compile this that are leading this have we studied theology have we studied the, the call to holiness in Vatican II? And I find this book, I find this book really incredible. And um, Michael O'Carroll, who has written this book, he's done a, an incredible piece of work and it's taken me a while. I'm not, I don't have a degree in theology to be able to quickly read it as other people might. So I had to digest it slowly. But I do have, I do have nine years in a seminary and I do remember reading and studying the documents of Vatican II several times. And again, I'm not here to defend these documents. I'm, I'm here to defend what is Catholic in those documents. So if there's anything in those documents that we could say is completely non-Catholic, well, I would ask people with more knowledge than myself, you can go and call them out. But as far as I remember, even Archbishop Lefebvre signed, his signature is on every single one of Vatican II documents. Every single one. That's a historical fact. Now, he might have backtracked later on, but, you know, many people look up to Archbishop Lefebvre as one of the great minds of the Catholic Church. I mean, he read the documents. He must have studied the documents. He must have understood the documents and he signed the documents. And if it was good enough for Archbishop Lefebvre at the time to sign the documents, then we should at least give them a reading and understand, well, what did they say? What did they want to do? Um, because many people forget, even before Vatican II, there were systemic problems in certain areas in the church. And it wasn't just... It, the church would not have been able to walk into the 70s, 80s, 90s, ignoring the problems that existed, especially in, in formation in, in a very, very changing church in world. And I know there's a lot of debate, but I think it's, it's important that people understand what was written there and what was not written in the, 
in the Second Vatican Council. We are suffering from such bad formation in the church today. Such incredibly bad formation that uh, most Catholics have no clue what Vatican II actually was calling Catholics to. Um, and in this book, it's, a, it's, it's really, I'm, I'm fascinating to see, you know, um, 57 times the documents of the um, Second Vatican Council talk about Christian perfection. And this is something that the synodal process fails to talk about. You know, evangelization is a consequence, not a program. The renewal of the church will not come about by plans, initiatives and structures, but by holiness of life. In order to be heralds of heralds of the gospel, to be men and women of today, we must become a holy people. And that's the universal call to holiness, is the, is the jewel, is the centre of the church. We need to bring, lead people to the truth to the way the truth in life to open up to let the spiritual life flower in their souls it's not, it's not about pe leaving people where they are it's bringing them to this amazing encounter with christ and and i'm sorry to say but the irish synodal synthesis document doesn't talk about this one single moment it doesn't talk about it at all <sighs> Since Second Vatican II, there have been much discussions over various, various initiatives which could bring about the renewal of the Church. The standard method of teaching Catholics has been traditionally through catechesis and more, me and more recently by enlivening and introducing the Catholic faith through charismatic-based evangelization initiatives. The necessity of these prior to baptism being exposed to the charismatic stage also known as the awakening, is essential and supported by scripture. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for solid food. 1 Corinthians 3, 2. In the longer term, charismatic stage initiatives are not developed to support a Christian when they move beyond awakening. Catholics who have been left believing that they can remain in the charismatic stage can become despondent when spiritual worldly and sinful trials present themselves without any spiritual tools to help them overcome the obstacles failure to take god seriously beyond the spiritual awakening is the reason why the church has not yet seen the long awakened spiritual renewal and universal call to holiness in his apostolic letter Nova Millennium Innuente, Pope John Paul II gives a clear indication that holiness and its intrinsic perfection should not should be approached initially through prayer and contemplation. To date, the new evangelization of Vatican II have inspired initiatives which to some degree catechize and reinvigorate the faith, but primarily proceed promote the need to evangelize. Whilst having merits, they have sometimes put the cart before the horse because true lifelong evangelization is a consequence of holiness. Not only can Catholics be left practicing a partial supernatural charity rather than the fullness of supernatural charity, but they can also be left practicing a veneer form of evangelization, devoid of of a more complete and supernatural holiness where we are found out and not practicing what we preach. True holiness can only be attained after trials in the purgative stage and then only after being released at a time of God's own choosing into the illuminative and unitive stages. The truth is that more Catholics have to move beyond the second conversion, which is not only a point in the spiritual life, but also an ongoing conversion until we reach the third conversion. Only then are we given a true, longer-lasting supernatural peace promised by Christ, 
which will manifest in the soul from the repeated pure receptions of the Eucharist. Very, very important what this book is saying. And I read it again. Only then are we given the true, longer lasting, supernatural peace promised by Christ, which is manifested, which is manifest in the soul from repeated pure receptions of the Eucharist. And what is pure reception of the Eucharist? Receiving the Eucharist in sanct in the state of grace, purifying your soul, going to confession stripping away sin. Uh, only then do we start to practice holiness, which is an attractive and an evangelization, evangelizing witness to others. Now, and it's important that people understand the spiritual life. You know, people once, often when you're falling, say, oh, I'm constantly falling. I'm constantly going to confession, Robert. And I just don't feel I'm holy. Christ wants us in the battle. You know what I mean? He wants us to be thriving. And um, sometimes in this life, in this world, you're never going to arrive to a state that you think you're going to arrive to. But Christ wants you in that battle with him. He wants you to, to walk with him, to perfect yourself. And that's the the call to, to Christian perfection, you know. Not mentioned in the synthesis document whatsoever. We consequently must fervently try to develop all the virtues and practice what we preach. Practice what we preach. The reason why the Catholic Church in Ireland is dying is because we preach something we don't practice. Or otherwise we'll be found wanting and despite our evangelizing efforts, people will not believe that we are holy people because our witness is so poor. In other words, we can be living, we can be left giving a witness of hypocrisy. This poor witness of hypocrisy is a product of not having moved beyond charismatic and the earlier purgative stages. All previous initiatives have quite rightly guided young and adult Catholics to a greater or lesser degree in the initial gospel message. And some have tried to develop a parish community by trying to discern people's charisms. A central core of the charismatic stage work came from those in the CCR who particularly highlighted the concept that Catholics have become over sacramentalized or over <laughs> under evangelized. The charismatic the charisma stage concerned spiritual awakening and was an aspect of our faith which Pope Benedict XVI promoted as he, accurately, he was acutely aware that this gave the initial direction towards fallen Christ in a fallen world. In fact, he teaches us that a direct knowledge of the teacher began for the disciples they saw where he lived and began to know him they would not have been they would not have to be heralds of an idea but witnesses of a person before being sent to evangelize they would have to be with christ establishing a personal relationship with him pope benedict on the 22nd of march 2006 anyway a scent of man to god <laughs> the author has been challenging me and i've and i think this book is really amazing um because you know we owe ourselves if we're going to if we're going to preach about this faith and talk about the faith we owe we owe catholics today the challenge to read what the church has taught and written uh, over the last 50 years. You cannot just disregard everything that Second Vatican II said and did. Uh, we must engage with it. But I also think when you read this, the Irish Synthesis document, it, it is really an exam on those that, I mean, those that should know the faith, those that have taken time to go to university to get doctorates you know most bishops have doctorates 
I'm not a doctor of the faith. Most bishops have doctorates of theology and different things. You know, they have been given the time to, to, um, to go into the mystery of the faith. And they have to bring, after going into that mystery, they have to bring out the truths of that faith. You know, to be holy, to come through the trials of being holy. It's not easy. But you have to draw people in to encounter Christ. And, ca- and Christ calls us to metanoia, to change your mind, to a conversion. That's what Christ does. That's what he does. You know, it's, it's the ascent of man to God. It's, we, we are called to be a holy people. And I'm sorry to say, but this, this synodal process, as it was documented in Ireland, has completely forgotten that has completely forgotten it. It's, it's, it's practically disregarded. Second, I mean, we've moved beyond Second Vatican Council because we've disregarded so much what Second Vatican Council was calling us to. You know, it's, it's, it really is, it really beggars belief, you know. Second Vatican Council didn't call for the Mass, as it was said, to be completely abolished. You know, it asked for... Um, it asked for the vernacular to be used, but it didn't ask. You know, I, I, I just don't understand for the life of me why the church is going now trying to destroy traditional movements and traditional communities and the traditional Latin mass. They should foster that and also, you know, use these tools. If it was up to me, I'd put the traditional Latin mass into the Missale Romanum and say, look there, you can use the order, the old order, the new order, evangelize, get out there, lead people to Christ. Let the Holy, you know, instead of saying, no, what previous hener- generations held sacred is not sacred to us anymore. We're not going to use it. It was bad. Really? Really? What is going on in the church? What is going on? What happened in the church? Really? You know, they're, they're um, seemingly the documents are being put together now to be published to further restrict traditional movements and I don't know where this is going instead of going out there and evangelizing those that don't know Christ at all I I wonder what's going on anyway I do I do recommend if we're going to move forward in the synodal process maybe this book maybe this book should be given out to everybody who wants to get involved I mean it's written by an English man um and it's really uh, I mean I, I'm slowly going through it uh, I think I think if if we understood this, we would we would be able to to move forward. But not understanding what is the mission of the church, what is the mission, illuminative, purgative, unitive, illuminative, you know, what are the stages of 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 moving towards um, holiness? You know, people people look for holy, holy people. You know, they they look for those that know Christ, that love Him. And uh, we should be bringing people to encounter Christ. Bringing people to encounter Christ. I do always wonder when people run around after mystics and so-called seers and all this. Don't they understand that the, that the mystery that they're looking for. That the, that the hunger that they need. The food that they need. The person that will transform them is in the Eucharist. There is over 2,000 chapels in Ireland. And Christ is present. Body, blood, soul and divinity in those chapels he is really present it's not a figment he is really there go to him keep going to him go to christ he's the greatest prophet the greatest seer the greatest mystic the great he's the fulfillment the 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 the, the, he is the way the truth and the life christ is the way that go to him encounter him let him transform you and then go and tell others and then bring them to him, not to you. I'm nobody anyway. Christ is the way and truth in life and he will transform you. Anyway, it's good that they're pausing this process because, to be honest, this this synodal process that was unleashed in Ireland will do nothing to renew the faith as it's documented in that census document. Nothing. It won't. It'll, it's like, exact, it's, it's copy-paste what the... The Dutch 
Catholics did after Second Vatican II. And it's just, that's just like fertilizer, how to destroy the faith. We have to lead people into prayer. We have to lead them into to the encounter of Christ. L- teach them what is sin. Teach them what is virtue. Are we going to start to, like did, did they actually mention the word virtue in the document? I was just wondering, just out of cure, let me just see. No, not once. What is virtue? What are we called to be virtuous? What are the virtues? <laughs> Never, not taught in our catechism. Not taught at all. So your typical teenager that leaves secondary school doesn't know what virtue, or what the call to virtue is. They don't know. It's not taught. It wasn't taught to me. So how could it be taught? Is it Has Catholic education improved? And then we're wondering why priests struggle, why young seminarians struggle, because this the, this is, wasn't taught in Irish seminaries, wasn't taught in the 1990s. And know that for a fact. You listen to what went on in Irish seminaries, you will know that the last thing that was taught was the concept of virtue. And then we're wondering why people struggle, why priests struggle, what has happened to the faith. We need to be a holy people. And in order to be that, we need to lead people into the mystery of Christian perfection. That is the answer. That is the, there is no other answer to evangelization other than leading souls into Christian perfection. Anyway, I I am not a theologian. I'm, this is, this is what I do in my pastime is read up on spirituality, educate myself. Uh, I wish somebody with the, doctoral theses and theology and all this could do it more justice and better but let's hope there'll be more bloggers in Ireland le- talking and teaching and telling us what Second Vatican II actually said instead of what some people think it said because so many laity don't read these documents or understand the call what Second Vatican II actually called for and what we got wasn't what the second Vatican Council called, and certainly what we have in this syn- synodal process is is far, far removed from anything that the second Vatican Council was calling for. It really is. It's 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 a shambolic process, to be honest. Um, and let's hope that the church will wake up and start. I mean, it's good that Bishop Barron is calling it out, uh, and he's one of the best known English speaking bishops in the world. And if he's calling it out, then. I think it's case settled. <laughs> it's case settled. The church has to listen now. Uh, and we need to get back to basics. Uh, to what? You know, stop taking swipes at traditional. Because traditional Catholics, many people forget, traditionally, you go to a an SSPX priest, that priest will tell you point by point how to make a confession what is sin and what is not sin people mightn't like it they might think oh he's too traditional it's too rigid but at least you'll get an answer you will never be led astray in confession by a traditional priest he will tell you now are there problems there yes there are problems um you know like there is everywhere but we need to know what is the truth that we need to align our lives with and today the truth has been lost in this process uh, everybody's welcome so there's no need to, for conversion there's no need to change your mind you know it's not we're not an ngo that is not what we are the purpose of the church is to lead souls to heaven to christian perfection that is the purpose that was the whole purpose anyway god bless you take care bye bye